We are now going to be looking at the first provisional tax payment. For all of the provisional taxes, you will see that I've provided you with four scenarios. Scenario A, Scenario B, Scenario C, and Scenario D. Scenario A and B are for natural persons, and Scenario C and D for companies. Scenario A and C is where the tax well, income does not exceed a million and scenario B and D it exceeds a million. So I've shown you this to show you the different, um, different ways in which the calculation is performed if your taxable income exceeds or does not exceed a million. Um, in, you'll see the next separate lecture examples for the first, second and third provisional tax payment. They're going to refer you back to these scenarios, so just be aware of that as you are working through it. Okay, again guys, as always, we focus on the principle, not the amounts. You'll see the tax tables and the tax rates I've used here are not the correct ones. These are the ones I provided you at the beginning of the document, my own. You must focus on the principle and then exam use the correct ones which they'll provide for you or you'll find your psycho student handbook. All right, so... First provisional tax payment, example one, refer to scenario A. Mr. A is currently preparing his first provisional tax payment for the 20x7 year of assessment. Right, what is the latest date of the first provisional tax payment may be paid? The first provisional tax payment is payable six months after the start of the year. A natural person's tax year starts on the 1st of March, so the 31st of August. Okay, so... One March twenty X six twenty eight February or twenty nine February if it's a leap year twenty X seven. Right, over here thirty one August twenty X six first provisional. Okay, now what I want you to see. When we look at the first provisional tax payment, these taxable incomes over here has no effect on the first provisional. Now what I mean by that is, there's no of those limits will apply. Remember the first provisional tax payment is made six months into the year. At that point in time, as a taxpayer, you need to submit a calculation of your, or an estimate of your taxable income to SARS. The, you must perform a proper calculation. SARS can ask you to justify your answers. Right? But the idea behind it is that you can submit an estimate as long as it is not less than the basic amount. Okay. Now, if we look at scenario A, let's quickly read it. Mr. A is a registered provisional taxpayer. He is 50 years old. His taxable income for the 20x6 year of assessment was 800,000 rands, 20x6. His taxable income for 20x5 was 700,000. Okay, now, the 20x6 was 800,000, which included 60,000 as a taxable capital gain. Basic amount must exclude the taxable capital gain. You can't include it because we're trying to determine what is a, an expected taxable income. Capital gains are not expected to happen every year. Right. This was received back on the 12th of August, the assessment. The 20x5 year of assessment was 700,000 and it was received back on the 12th of February 20x6. There's been some changes in Mr. A's circumstances and he will not be earning as much as he did in prior years. He has performed the calculation and he believes his taxable income for 20x7 will be 500,000 rands. So now we ask, what is his first provisional tax payment, sorry, B, what is the basic amount for the first provisional tax payment? Now guys, we are doing it for the 20x7 year of assessment. So the first thing that you always do is you go back to the previous year of assessment, 20x6. You look at the date of our assessment, 31 August, and you compare it, back, compare it to the date on which the assessment was received, 12 August. If that is 14 days or more between each other, right, so this must be 14 days or more before, then you may use 
that year as the basic amount. And in this case, that is what we will use. So the basic amount is the 800,000, less the taxable capital gain, gives us 740,000. Now, once you've determined the basic amount, you must determine if you have to adjust it by 8%. So what you do is you compare our year-end date, oh, sorry, our payment date here, the 31 August, 26. You compare that to the year-end date of the year that you are using. And we are using the 20x6 year, so we will compare to 28 February 20x6. So we say, 28 February 20x6, that's the year we're using. Is that more than 18 months? More than 18 months ago. More. In this case, it's only 6 months ago. If it is more than 18 months ago, you need to adjust it by 8% for each completed 12 months. In this case, we won't because it's not more than 18 months. Then C, I ask you, uh, what is the first provisional tax payment if Mr. A uses the basic amount that we've calculated in B and if there's 2,000 rands a month in employee's tax? Right, so we said that the basic amount is 740. So if it was 740,000, we do the tax per tables, rebate. If there were medical things here, section 6A, 6B, you would take that into account, guys. This is in the tax for the year. We, the first provisional tax payment is only for the first six months, so we half it. We deduct in the employee's tax, because that tax has already been paid, only for six months, because we're only looking at six months. And that gives us our first provisional tax payment for Mr. A. Example two is for scenario B. Right, so the scenario B, Mr. D, is currently 50 years old. Guys, I've made this one exactly the same. The only difference here is that his taxable income will be 1.1 million rands instead of 500,000. Now, before I continue with this, sorry, in example one, part D, I should have just actually spoken about this. I'll ask you, can Mr. A use 500,000 rands as his first provisional tax payment? Now, he calculated his basic amount to be 740,000. So, SARS expects that to be the minimum that you can submit. However, they tell you in paragraph 191C that you can use less than the basic amount. So you can use 500,000 rands. As long as, and this is the quote, circumstances of the case justify the submission of an estimate of a lower amount. So in other words, if you can prove to SARS that it is correct to use a lower amount, you can do it. But you must be able to prove it. You can't just decide to do it. Right, now, in part B, Mr. D, like I said, is exactly the same. So what I want you to see is, guys, when I look at the basic amount here, I want you to see when you go through this question, it's exactly the same as for in the first example for scenario A. So although they have taxable incomes that are different, if the basic amount is calculated in the same way, you refer to the previous year of assessment. So I want you to just see as you go through it, that's exactly the same. And then I ask you to calculate his basic amount and I'll, um, his first provisional, and I want you to see it's exactly the same. That's also what I refer to here. Right, example three is for scenario C. Right, so let's just quickly look at scenario C. So scenario C, B Limited is a company with a December year end. Okay, December year end. So we're doing a 20x7 year. So this runs from the 1st of January 20x7 to 31 December 20x7. On the 30th of June, 20x7. That's the date of our first provisional tax payment. What is the basic amount? You would apply the same principle. We did 20x7 here, so we go to 20x6. We are doing our payment on the 31st of December, 20, uh, sorry, the 30th of June, 20x7. So we compare that to the date of our assessment, 12 June. Is that 14 days between them? Yes, so we can use 20x6. 20x6, the year ended, 31 December, 20x6. We compare that to the date of um, our payment here. Is that more than 18 months? No. So we don't adjust it by 8%. So 740 is our basic amount. What is the first provisional tax payment then? 740 times 28%. If this is a small business corporation, you would use the small business corporation table. Half of that because it's the first provisional tax payment. So that is our first provisional tax payment. Then situation, example four, right? It's the same questions. The only difference here in scenario D is that the taxable income 
is now 1.1 for 20x7. But then I want you to see again, guys, when you work through it, everything is exactly the same because in the first provisional tax payment, there's no effect on these taxable incomes over here. 